Okay, I'm, I'm right there. there. I, I, I t <laughs> it's like it's the signal be going in and out. I already told you that. Yeah, it's about to be five o'clock, so everybody out. coming to time. Oh, man, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. right. All right, y'all. Like, about to get a booster. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to go up? Yeah. All right, we're going live. Yeah. Right. Oh, shit. Shell went out. I, I'm coming to you in one sec, but you. I was trying to look for something. My phone. God, we my can, phone. Shit, we can my wait. Phone. People, it ain't like we uh, got no 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 uh no sponsors oh, or nothing. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. All right, here we go. All right. And. We are live. My screen is still frozen. Oh, yeah. Hey, there we go. There we go. What's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to Live at Five from the Parada Pod. I am your host, Kingfish Mac, joined by my illustrious cohorts, the ever-present Nick Nass. What's happening with you, Nick? Oh, yeah. Got it going on. Got it going and, on, baby. Ready for this? That's right. That's right. And coming to us live from the road, doing our thing, because you know life don't never stop. We keep it moving around here, is uh, my wonderful mermaid in the pond, Miss Nick Mo. How you doing, babe? Yo, I found everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, for those of you that uh, tuned in yesterday and uh, saw we was going through a whole bunch of technical bullshit, I want to apologize. You know, we uh, none of us are professionals. None of us have done any of this before. We just, you know, people that's been stuck in the house for a minute and decided to try to do something. So we're figuring this shit out on the fly. We're going to have all kind of technical glitches, this, that, and the third. But guess what? We're going to... Uh, Keep coming back and trying to make it better for y'all and for 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 each of us uh, every time we come back. So again, I apologize, but hey, we in this bitch today. What's up with you, Nick? Yep, yeah. Oh man, just outside at the at the little river spot. Try to get it in, you know what I'm saying? Change a little scenery. That's How right, my mama that's... said this morning, I broadcast it from the woods, not the hood. So I guess I'm all good, huh? <laughs> I ain't mad at you, shit. I sure ain't mad at you. How you doing? There we go, man. How you doing today, Shell? Doing okay. Beautiful weather down south, so I can't complain. Yeah, yeah. You look like you're uh, you know, you know, out and about and trying to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm out and about. I'm out and about. You know, trying to make it happen. Trying to make it happen. Trying to make it happen. <laughs> that's right that that natural lighting ain't nothing wrong with it. matter of fact man i don't know what's wrong with me, man. so we, we kind of uh missing our little toenail today our good yeah, side when our good side look, uh none flyer had to be in traffic today so yeah yeah we miss him. We know we know he's tuning in, and uh, he'll be back with us tomorrow. He has some business to take care of. Like I said, you know, uh, nothing happens. You know, nothing happens in life and shit that we ain't gonna never be able to deal with. So, you know, everything that we do, we're doing it on the fly and making it happen. You know, you got some business to take care of. Go handle that, and um, hit us from the road, or hit us when you get back, or you know, jump back in tomorrow. But uh, we love you, Frank. Yeah, and uh, Frank, we're gonna be you tomorrow, Frank. That's right. That's Good right. Friend. Oh yeah. So down at the bottom, uh, so you guys we can't. Today? What's, what's on your mind? Down at the bottom, you guys can't see it, but uh, the rest of the folks can. The question of the day. Well, here, let me do it a different way. So, uh, where am I at? Let me read this uh, paragraph right here that kind of fits into what we're going to talk about today. So it says, the black community suffers from an increased rate of mental health concerns, including anxiety, depression, or anxiety and depression, 
The increased incidence of psychological difficulties in the black community is related to the lack of access to appropriate and culturally responsive mental health, ca mental health care, prejudice, and racism inherent in the daily environment of black individuals and historical trauma enacted on the black community by the medical field. Moreover, given that the black community exists at the intersection of racism, classism, and health inequity, their mental health needs, our health, mental health, health needs are often exacer exacerbated and mostly unfulfilled. Issues related to economic insecurity and associated experiences such as violence and criminal injustice further serve to compound the mental health disparities in the black community. So the question on the board today is how is your mental health? How are we doing mentally as a community individually and how do we address mental health concerns that exist in our community because you know we we aren't the only community in you know on you know on the planet or in the country that doesn't have to deal with mental health issues but it seems as though we don't deal with them out in the open what you think nick nass okay so systemically or we talk about critically we just talked about period how you know however however you want to jump into it so as far as how i dealt with going through days in my life i try not to have a trauma bond with things so it's an everyday step when god gave give me life to put my two feet on the ground so whatever comes with that from a conversation of lack of revenue or just my mindset so i actually had to apply meditation froze up on us bro he froze up on us yeah he froze up on us oh he back he coming back look like he coming Hello? back in I got, I, yeah. I got that back. We got sound, no yeah, picture, bro. So, trying to clarify how I actually feel and how I actually go do things. So, I try to set and have good vibrations during the day, you know, at the start of my rising, I say. And where do I put my mindset? So, with that, it's all about how you apply yourself to different situations. I would say for me, for example, myself, because sometimes do do I have somebody I can lend the ear to, you know, or somebody to lend the ear to me to to, to express myself when I, you know, saying when I'm feeling that tired and try not to take the information that would turn like put me into that mindset, you know, because they they will want you to take medications and did you sleep right? Was you tossing and turning, uh, so forth and so on. So well, let me ask you this. I don't know so. If that's uh, that's my re that's my reality. Okay, so as you know, coming into adulthood, coming from a teenager, you know, we don't really get to be teenagers, right? When we get to be, once we turn teenagers, we pretty much grown because you out in the streets dealing with life and death type of bullshit. But so coming from a teenager into adulthood, responsible adulthood, going to get a fucking job, and you know, being in significant relationships or whatever, um, how? Do you think that there was a time or a space where you felt safe expressing things that, you know, may have, you know, depression or anxiety or just, you know, feelings of, uh, you know, are you going to be successful or, you know, all the different shit that comes along with being black in America? Or did you just feel as though, you know, whatever kind of thing, if you woke up and, you know, you was feeling sluggish and you didn't want to go to work. Or you didn't want to get out the fucking bed. It was just, oh, well, I had a little too much to drink last night. Well, I, I'll, I never. Oh, you going in? Okay, I'll go. That's difficult for me because, you know, at what point do you. Say it again? I don't think I was ever burdened with that part. Shell, you broke you up. Oh, there you go. 
Now, now you back with no sound, babe. Oh, there you go. You can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, hold on. Okay, so I was like, that's difficult for me because I'm not really good with acting. I, I think I mentioned that yesterday. It's a couple of different reasons of help. I'm not. I'm just not good for acting up all the way around. Right. And but and it's not a you know like I'm one of the people that so you know and yeah hell yeah I battle I feel like I battle like depression every fucking day every day you know but. I, what do you do? You get up, you deal. You know, you 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 try to put one foot in front of the other. You know, like I don't know. You know, like what? When do you be like, hey, I wanna. I think I need to talk to somebody. You know, or you know, like it hasn't been always. You know, culturally appropriate, lack of a better word. But now most people saying that you need to get out talk to somebody. But before that, you know, it was kind of like round upon. I'm getting, and I say it lack of a better, lack of a better phrase. But you know, like you didn't, you didn't, you just didn't kind of grow up, you know, going to counseling that you needed to go to counseling. So I don't know. I was told by the friend that every adult probably needs to counseling. Like I could probably agree with that because it's it's hard out here, and you know, we all balance something. You know, you know. I'm not working right now, so that's a constant battle for me, you know, because I'm doing something all day, every day, and stuff like that. You know, I'm in cl- I'm, I'm taking classes, and I have that to, like, really occupy my time now, you know, trying to do something different. But, again, like, when is it acceptable to, like, just get some help? Well, that's, you know, that's that's kind of the question. You know, have we been conditioned to not seek help? You know, um, is is being is going to 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 have a you know talk to a therapist? Is that um, taboo in our community? You know, um, is well, it's not. Is it because it is? Um, you know, in my experience, you know, when I was coming up, if anybody was, you know, they used to send me to go uh, to go talk to some psychologists at the Y when I was young, right on Saturday afternoons. Now that was therapy. Because, you know, I was being a badass. But, you know, you don't want to tell nobody that you got to go talk to some white man about, you know, some what your mama did when you was four and whatever bullshit like that. Because, you know, the stigma that's attached to it. Your homeboys ain't trying to hear you talking about you going to see no damn therapist. What's wrong with you? What you got to see a therapist for, right? And what the hell is a therapist? And what is you telling him? Is you telling on us, Right. <laughs> Yeah, at some point, though, we have to, like, you know, when it starts spilling over, like, you know, maybe you can't hold a relationship. Maybe you have so many issues. You know, like, you know, maybe just crying stuff and sleep every fucking night don't work no more. Like, you know, like, when do you attribute that to something that you'd be like, okay, you know, let me, you know, try to be happy. You know, you try meditation, try swimming, just, just ain't working. Well, the thing is that we had church in the Boys and Girls Club or the YCA, you know, as as as, as putting ourselves at in, in teenage years or going into adulthood, we still had outlets where we can talk to our peers. But my peers was everybody from I could talk to all the way to 85 because they had some label things because they actually lived life, you know, said 20, 30 years before us. So if we if if we had people that was humble in life, although they had to go out and do the harder things that we had, we was no, not aware of because they didn't talk to us like telling us their issues, their problems. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it it'll carry on for generations. Cause sometimes we used to get, we couldn't even get, I love you out of nothing. You know what I'm saying? When, when, when did you hear the, the, the generation before us actually say, somebody else said that they, uh, great grandparents did say they love you, or their great granddaddy did say they love you. But I actually had mentors, you know what I'm saying? I actually had people I can go talk to, or how about this? That they wasn't on no devices 
and they actually see what was going on with you by just sit back and listen and watch how you move. And they would mentally check you. Well, you know, I don't because know. W- what is the things that they had to go through? I don't know. I don't know if I if if I agree with you about uh you know the the the, the generation before us not expressing love. I think that um, they were very expressive and I, I think that they kind of passed that down to us you know right now today you see your cousin you kiss your cousin in the mountain and it's not no big old fucking thing like it ain't no, no freaky shit or, you know and you talk to your cousins and your sisters or your brothers and you get off the phone and I, I love you you always tell your people you love them and I think that that's handed down to us but I think what you kind of saying Nick is um, some of the men some of the older men before us were men men you know they weren't real expressive about you know oh yeah boy well i love you come give me a hug but they'll you know rub you on the top of the head when they pass by you you know in the damn living room Mm -hmm. so it's the same thing it's just i think that they were a little bit uh, uh they were way less expressive than we have been given uh permission to be as a matter of fact, not even permission to be, because in this day and age, um, if you're not being expressive about uh, things that's going on inside of you, then people, you know, think of you as being toxic and repressive and depressed, and you know, you always kind of encouraged to go seek mental health, and that's kind of what um, inspires today's topic. Is that what I have noticed in the last couple of years? Is that there has been more of a push for acceptance uh, for mental health and mental health issues in the black community. People, major celebrities, Charlemagne the God and um, whoever else, right, they really just kind of pushed the whole idea of, you know, black folks need to take care of your mental health as well as your physical health. Yeah, you want to be a vegan, you want to eat right or this, that, and the third. You want to stop drinking and you want to meditate and do yoga, but... You won't go talk to somebody about the things that, you know, cause you anxiety and depression. Yeah. So I had no idea, really, like personally, what depression is, or the the time when when I got diagnosed with this, with these uh, growths in my stomach, and they sent me to talk to some people. Right. It was like foreign to me because, uh, well, I was. I'm, I'm comfortable with the days I'm going through because, you know, spiritually, I wasn't broken. You know, I could, you know what I'm saying? I, I cherish that I have my mama. I cherish I have you. I cherish I have, you know, these people I could talk to, Ronald Max, you know, uh, so forth and so on, your sister. And I think in our family, because we have people that work in psychology that went to school and got degrees and stuff that shout out to Ronald Mack and Felicia (laughs) yeah that that we never it was just a regular conversation in the midst of us congregating together and and that is the part where I could say that am am I numb to the numb to the fact or was it just in my presence all the time and we didn't have to seek out any other ways because they could kind of like read you. Not, not read you, but actually it's like, okay, well, they were brave enough to even say, hey, I see that's on your mind. Talk to me about it. Now, we might cuss and scream or whatever, but we know we got God on our side. We got the spiritual thing. And we got family that would put you like that. Like, even when they said you couldn't sleep, they gave, they prescribed me some uh, Seroquel or something. And guess what? what? My cousin Felicia <laughs> was like, you know, that's a psychotic <laughs> medication. You know what I'm saying? For the sleep. That's going to put you to sleep. You know what I'm saying? How are you dealing with that? But what if you're not good like, with that? Like, what if you're not good with opening up to people? And you and you used to just following everything up. Like, like I don't know. It's just that, you know, I mean, I feel like I can talk to people to a certain extent about things. And, and I think that goes back to trust issues, too. You know, like, I know I got them and stuff like that. You know, I could I could be close to you without being close to you, if that makes sense. It makes sense. It makes a bunch okay, of sense. Okay, so but let's here's, go. Here's the thing. I, uh, I think that 
I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at it differently. I'm, I'm looking at it from two different points of view. I'm looking at it from the point of view that, okay, something is wrong with me. And, and hell, we don't go talk to no fucking white people. So uh, who do I got to talk to type of shit? Who do I know? And from that point of view, Shell, I can understand exactly where you're coming from. Because, you know, you would, you know, it would take some, you know, oh, this is somebody that you're going to, you feel like this, this person is going to see you tomorrow and be in judgment of some kind of you. And that's perfectly normal. So what you do, and I think this is what the push is for now, is... Um, removing it from going to talk to your home girl because you know crying on your home girl's shoulder because you don't know how to figure this shit out and everything just seems so overburdening and go talk to somebody professional somebody that's not um, connected to you and, and and then maybe you will feel um, a little more open to you know just you know being able to talk so what you say so people who feel like like they gonna be judged. Yeah. Like but you, what you, you said. Yeah. But what you said is that with the with the masses say that we all in the same mental state. Well, it's not that broken. It's not that we. It's not that we that we all in the mental state. It's exactly the opposite. It's that we are not all in the in the same mental state. It's that I think that people uh, for the most part, other people, right, other groups of people have you know they have a. A, a particular way that they look at people in the black community, right? We, we are almost thought of in the same way that they thought of us, you know, 300 years ago, that, you know, we can't be hurt. We, we're like animals. We, we don't have no feelings. We don't have no, uh, you know, ration, rationality and, you know, things of that nature. And so nobody expects us to be having mental health issues. When you have a mental health issue to, you know, the white folks or whatever, when a nigga got mental health issues, it means you need to tase his ass in the street and get his ass in the fucking whatever, the Camarillo or some damn where. You feel what I'm saying? But in terms okay. of functional, dealing with functional mental health issues like every other fucking community has been able to do for 100 years since Freud, we don't have that same access, and I think that we've been conditioned to believe that we've been conditioned to believe the same shit about us that these motherfuckers believe, and that is that shit. We don't need nothing. We good. We could take it. You know what the hell you need to so, go talk to somebody for? But I think that that's so, kind of changing right now. So the thing is, right? Like if the people don't know what you know, and I don't think Shell knows the, the significance of this of my. My travels or this journey is part of my life, right? I I actually had to dig deep into myself, not close in, but like even you brought up the fact that it's like, Nikki, why you haven't called nobody? You know, saying <laughs> what are you going through? Or you or you allow your fucking ass yourself. is what I want to do, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, <laughs> you want to choke your ass. <laughs> but, hey, but the, but the, the best thing is, I, I really, really right. And I've been through all kind of trials and tribulations. I moved from New Orleans to L.A. to 111th, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody else wasn't. But I still had to go out there and get mit. I had to get mentally tough when I was. Well, people would say I was at my most vulnerable moment. Well, see, that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, no, I think no, that's that, like, like that's why I'm going to clarify, like clarifying the whole thing, right? But the strength that I had, that I got from the universe, is to say, Nikki, it's okay. It's okay to be different. It's okay to have this thought. This is okay to actually look in the mirror and say, what am I going to do from here? Because even if I go get diagnosed with something, what is the underlying cause of that? So I'm saying it's a little bit greater than that, that this was on the surface, right? Because we could learn stuff like, how they say that the the lessons we get, we too, but you never forget the teachers. I never forgot the teacher. And I got ancestry that tapped me on the shoulder to say, hey, straighten up. It's okay. We see you. You know, and that's another part that's in the community where we feel like nobody sees them. So do we act out? You know what I'm saying? Because when we ask for help, it seems a sign of weakness. But what is your base of operation? You know, so uh -huh. the thing is, we could we could go sign up for all these programs and everything else. But, you know, it starts with you in the mirror and the relationship you got spiritually with yourself. 
Other than that, you can't even, like like Shell said, can you get out here and give up enough strength to say, I have a voice that I'm not embarrassed? Because people are using to get you, especially right now, you want to be transparent with people. They're going to take that as a sign of weakness. Now, when you flare up, they're going to say, he didn't take his medication. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. But but then when you go, you know, shoot up a star or something like that, or kill everybody in the house, and they be like, "Oh, I guess something really was wrong with him. What the fuck for real? I guess we don't do this." And, and no, that's what be happening. Like, you know, you see all the time, chick with a dude, you know, whipping her ass. You know, she don't leave. She she kill her and the kids. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think again, like I said, I th I think that we um we all come from you know because we ain't, ain't none of us no kid kids, so we all come from um, a history where we have we have seen just dealing with the shit be normalized. You know what I'm saying? And you know you know we was taught not to even talk about. The shit that go on in your house, outside your house, let alone go talk to some stranger about the shit that's going on inside your head. But that doesn't make it any more healthy because we were able to deal with it. I mean, you know, especially our family, you guys know, we, you know, we are, we, we are compri comprised of a group of survivors. We make shit happen, every last one of us. Ain't nobody just going to just sit on their ass and, you know, curl up, you know, under a park bench or some shit because you know we fucked up but at the same time we do have you know what we do have historically people in our in you know in our family or in our history who have had issues that were not diagnosed as proper mental health issues you know we just had some other fucking word for it you know and just dealt with them you know they just would be in the back room you know yeah, at the back of the house or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, but hey, yeah. hey, but smoke, but smoke, but <laughs> but hey, but smoke just went over for a minute, right? How we know? Not that I realize it, that the universe gave me a voice to calm people's nerves because I see it right here. Because just like you said. It's like like the mayor. Everybody know you. You come in good faith, in good standards with everybody. I'm not out here trying to victimize anybody. Although it's in me, you know what I'm saying? No, I, I'll be with the business when it's time to be with the business. And it was like, oh, he always talks so nice. And he's good to be around. Good spirit. So, what? What? I ask this question to both of y'all, right? Mm -hmm. What's in your nature? Right? What what is in your nature? Because on that we are, we actually losing it to actually cope to even bring up the taboo question of this. You know what I'm saying? Because how did we settle ourselves? Because people are signed up to hear somebody talk and, and actually but just turn around and like and, and like I said, you know, it actually try to give that a it's my wrong, like just like Cheryl said. How we know that that person can have a bad day, and you just stop them and touch them on the and say, "You okay? What's on your mind?" Because we can hear it in people's voices. Y'all know that, right? Y'all never felt that. Y'all can hear it in people's voices. Say, "Let me go over here and talk to this dude." Now I'm like, not getting the car and push. Right. Hey, bad come in for a minute. Come help me with these groceries. Yeah, I have a bad habit of asking people because I feel like in some ways I'm an empath. I feel like I, I'm always asking somebody like. Like you said, it's a small thing. It's the way you might look, or the, or the, or something in your voice, or just some type of like some type of premonition that just makes me act. Are you okay? You know, hey, is everything okay? Yeah, or something like that. And they got people who kind of get mad when you do that. But I mean, it's just like I don't know. I mean, I, what, just like what you said, what are you conditioned to do? I'm conditioned to help everybody else with their problems and not just mine. There we mm -hmm. go. And look, and that's I'm, me too. I'm and, pretty and, much the same. I'm the same way. That's why I said that we are amongst the chosen few that actually has that ear, that has that voice. And we're comfortable with it. Right. And like you said, it's a comfortability thing. I feel like everybody don't have my problem. I feel like everybody's not 44, unmarried, or don't have any children. And that's probably paying off the rest of upon to have some. That's some shit that really fucking bothers me. 
because I feel like as a woman, you just here to reproduce. And I didn't do that. Did I miss my mark on that? You know, how you live with that? And that's just something like the shit I battle personally. So, yeah, I get moments of despair. I get moments, of, I get real, real bad about depression about myself. But like I said, it's, I'm well be talking about this because you have to be able to say, okay, when is the time that I actually just go sit on somebody's house and just get this off my chest and just say this or, or help, hopefully they can help me kind of like work through some of the shit that's going on in my mind, you know, and stuff like that. Because like I said, I'm conditioned to be a year for everybody else, but I'm not conditioned to dump on people. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just not conditioned to dump. But like I said, for one, I feel like, I, I, I just feel like, you know, like my car is not your problem. Well, what I would say is this, in terms of when, when do you, you know, ask for help? Um, like, my mom, I grew up in, in a house where, you know, you guys all, and, and me too, we all sing the praises of the accomplishment, accomplishments of my mother, right? You know, where, you know, where she came from, what she was on, and flipped her life around, and, you know, did big things in, you know, in schooling, and, you know, in, 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 in her profession, right? Um, but but the backstory, what nobody talks about except maybe me and my sister, is that um, for a whole lot of those years, we had to hear her, uh, you know, never feeling like she was worthy, and you know, never feeling like the things that she did was good enough, or uh, you know, never having any kind of confidence in herself. Like you're an honor roll student at UCLA, you're on the dean's list. At UCLA, you're in a master's program at UCLA, and you think that what you do ain't good enough. But these are the things that I know. It's right. You know, I I was told I was beautiful every fucking day of my life growing up, but yet still, I'm constantly asking myself, "Am I pretty enough? Am I cute enough? Am I this enough? Am I that enough? Am I that enough? Am I that enough?" You know, if is my man really enough? You know, am I lovable enough? You know, and, 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 it, and it's hard because, like I said, when that starts spilling over, then what do you do? So what I would say is, or, or not the what, but rather the when, is, um, you know, you got you got to step outside of yourself before it consumes you. Before you start to, you know, before you start to not not be able to recognize yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, not, and it's not just about real dramatic things like, you know, you fucking don't want to get out of bed and no shit like that felicia was the one who really told me you know because i'm functioning and doing what I, I have to do but there is a period of time a long ass period of time where nothing was working out for me everything that i would try to do yeah, you call it some kind of fucking you call shit it that was going, oh <laughs> man just the buzzer. most ridiculous shit in the world <laughs> but i would get up every morning and try to work some other shit out now at the same time, whenever I would talk to my sister, I talk to Nick or somebody that you know I love. I think that it would kind of come out that you know, hey, you know, you're always putting yourself down, and you know, you you know, this nigga always be telling me, nigga, you do this, you do that, you the nigga that figured shit out, and you sitting up here talking about how this ain't gonna work with nigga. What the fuck is wrong with you? And I had to like really kind of realize, but it was Felicia who said. Yeah, I think you might be low key, you know, going through a depression or something, nigga. You don't think about that shit because you don't think that you can get sick. I don't. And I was like, "You're right." I don't think I, about it. I don't. Shit, I didn't <laughs> been through. I didn't been through five penitentiary terms and been homeless twice, and then raised three kids to be cool motherfuckers that don't none of them got to go through none of that shit, right? And um, I still wake up sometimes thinking that shit. What the fuck, man? I'm just like a big failure and shit because I measure though I don't measure my successes against themselves. I measure them against some shit that somebody else did. So I ain't never had a brand new car. Never in my life. I'm 56 years old. I never drove nothing with zero miles. I never owned a house. I didn't have hundreds of thousands of dollars. But I ain't never did none of that real shit. I ain't never been on vacation. Never been on a cruise. Ever. I didn't been to several states, <laughs> never on vacation. But I'm saying, you know, you know, there there are times when when you know when you feel a particular way about yourself, right? Okay, this is who I am. 
I'm the nigga that fixes shit. I'm Superman. I don't get sick. And I sure in the fuck don't get mentally sick. I ain't taking no fucking Seroquel, no fucking Adderall, none of that shit. Right? Y'all got me fucked up. I'm going to smoke this weed and drink some fucking Tito's <laughs> and talk some shit. That's what I'm going to do. You piss me off, you're going to hear about it. That's, that's my therapy. But that's not really therapy. You know what I'm saying? That's just ways of dealing with the shit historically, like we've been taught historically. You know what I'm saying? Uncle Titty, you know, Uncle fucking Uncle Bo, Uncle Hip, you know, these is men that they didn't complain about. Compl man, men would up. They would drink till two o'clock in the morning and be up by four thirty to go get on a fucking roof or something. How about that? Exactly. Nobody fucking got exactly. no time to go talk to no goddamn body about some fucking problem. Oh, I feel I just don't feel myself today. I feel like I just want to lay around. No, you get your ass up and go out here and do something, nigga. And, Drink some of this Crown Royal or something on the way out the door. Maybe you'll feel better. Cut it short. So look, so that that is the thing, right, Matt? You know, that's just be all the way transparent. It's like we all are success stories, right? This that this the whole gamut of all of us, right? You know, from the ones that we lost and the and the ones that we have gained, right? But we actually have examples of greatness of people's being successful when they actually say hey either somebody else sit, pull us to the side not to not to be out in front of us parading waving arms and got to come to fish fights it's like look this is the thing that we all have to go through in life you know what i'm saying it's and, and people live in false narratives false reality right now so yes i'm grateful that it's bringing awareness to it right but does it actually go all the way down to the bottom, to the people that's getting it out the mud? They have to rebuild from all that, you know. Well, so we can persevere over anything I, and, and, I, and get a basic operation by looking in the mirror. Well, you know, of course you and, got and, you know. And, you go ahead, go ahead, brother. And, and that, that, and, and that's the thing that. We actually have to cope with that. We have to get over that hump first before we say we can go sign up at uh, Kaiser Permanente, you know, say or whatever healthcare facility, or we end up in jail. And who's going to house us? So we going with the J Cats, or we going to go ahead and be in general population, or do we have to be by ourselves because we, you know, that's great, at, the, at the tipping point. That's a great segue too, um, because that's a that's one of the most underrepresented. Uh, communities or our genres in you know in terms of uh, identifying mental health patients are people that are incarcerated man they got so many people going through so much shit inside these jails and not getting the correct treatment you know and we're not talking about no people you know because you think about oh yeah well he's just crazy and so you think if he's in jail then this motherfucker then chopped up somebody and put him in a bag and his ass is gonna be gone for a long no we're talking about people that you know get picked up on the street for vagrancy and shit like that yeah right? go do 30 days go see felicia you know what i'm saying yeah. and then get kicked back right back out to the fucking streets with no care, no aftercare, no, you know, you give them a fucking piece of paper and tell them to call somebody or some shit like that. But yeah. And then when you get to the to, to the prison level where you should have appropriate levels of um, mental health care, psych, you know, psychological care and that type of shit, you know, um, all, all of your all of your therapeutic type of scenarios are done under the under the guise of punishment. So you go do an anger management class, but it's not because you feel like you need to address your anger management. It's because the court said that you got to do anger management when your ass go, <laughs> and uh, you know when you get when you get to the yard or whatever, you got to do that yeah. in order to get. So you know you end up in those type of scenarios. Or what they'll do is they'll get you there and diagnose you, you know, as something off the fucking charts, because who knows what kind of deals they have going with the you know, with the pharmaceutical companies and shit, right? And then just prescribe your ass, you on, you on pill call. You know, you fucking doing the Thorazine shuffle and shit at 6.30 every fucking night. So nobody's getting no real care. You either yeah. get medicated, you getting drug, 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 or you getting ignored, ignored, ignored. Yeah. Right. So, and, 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 go ahead, Cheryl. No, no, you go ahead. I, I said just like this, right? 
uh, even when I had to go take this the state mental evaluation, right? To uh, to arm myself, so I had to go take the stuff that the police had to take, right? So I'm sitting in there now, as a young teenager or a young person, you know, I got diagnosed with dyslexia, right? Like everything was bad, so I couldn't get stuff. I was closing in from the counselor at school, right? But as an adult, you know, to go sit in a, a, a state a state mental evaluation test to get a weapon. It kind of drew me for a loop. So I'm like, what am I doing here? To ask permission for what? But all the stuff been answered because they gave it to me. And so the things that I, I was told when I was younger got totally reversed as a grown person. Right? So I actually went to ask permission to get a weapon. They say, well, you got to take a mental evaluation to see if you're capable of doing that. Let me see what <laughs> makes you tick. Right. Wow. <laughs> And I was right. on his head too. Like, yeah, man, you going up you in there fucking shooting the with the police and shit, man. What the fuck you doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I, was, I was on some, on, was on some Nick stuff, right? I said, man, I got my freedom or whatever. <laughs> y'all got to pay $200. You know what I'm saying? Now, they, now, now in somewhere else, they say you sold off, right? But I was, I was sick of going off the <laughs> And it gave right. the wrong motherfucker CCW. You know, so it actually. <laughs> a wrong. Yeah, but I'm saying I got. So the things that I believed in my head that I was. That was told to me. And what reality is. Now. I took the chance. It was brave enough to do that. Right? It wasn't about the money in there. It was like, let me prove to myself. I looked in the mirror and said, you know what? I'm not going to let nobody stop me from doing this because I could roll around with it on my waistband. It said that I'm good, but they ain't gonna say nothing when the police stop you. You're not, you know, you don't have all your stuff in order. So that's why I'm getting to is like, yeah, across the board, people say the mental health thing is readily apparent now, or they paying more attention to it now, right? Like you said, Keith, it's always been there for multiple generations, right? But uh -huh. with 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 positive mm -hmm. thinking people and saying I'm willing to look into myself. Looking to this day, and we, we're actually and not looking up where in deep to say if I'm nutty. Oh, I feel like this in the morning. Oh, I feel like that. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, well, you got people cracking up on jobs now. You know, you, you, yeah. you, you got people murdering whole households. So, yeah, you have to look at that shit now. It, it's on the front burner now. Like, what yeah, it's it's you, can't, you can't ignore it anymore. You know, you can't. You know, you can't, you know, everybody know Cousin Ricky got something going on and, you know, you just acting like it don't, don't help the issue, but at the same time, not everybody knows. And you just can't, you know, and you can't play it off no more. Or, or, what's really happened is that the people that they're saying that nothing is wrong with and then, or, or people who went to people for help mm -hmm. and they didn't get the help and then they end up committing suicide or they end up killing somebody else. So now it's, it's totally it's, it's totally on the front burner now, and 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 now you can't and now you can't justify doing pay cuts for mental health. So See, but the this, now government this is, didn't help that shit either. They was doing so, pay cuts like pay cuts on mental health, like like people yeah. wasn't you know yeah people but now you're doing shit. So so you you hit on something very prolific yesterday too, right? Shell, you had said that when you give your all, give your all, that somebody's over here saying that it's not good enough, right? And then what you do with that? So when you actually go to this person that's been frustrated because they get bombarded by all these people coming in because now it's a thing, right? right. They right. actually have to go get the help too because now they're overwhelmed and bombarded by stuff. How do you decipher that? How do you unmix that when you go home? Now I got a battle at home with my own scenario that this Five other people just told me, now, is it that bad for them? Well, shit, mine's a little bit worse, so what did I do with that? So how <laughs> right. can I be valuable to the people that's coming to me for the thing, and I got to put on this job right. face, I got to put on this job face and say that this person's life is in my hands, so I got to sign off on it to release it back into the street. Now, now if that guy said, well, I thought we had a break you yesterday, and they go up here and do whatever, boom. Now, that person who was the counselor is out of a job, so you couldn't help that person? 
<laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> now it's it, it becomes much more than that. It's like you know, like like Farrakhan did the Million Man March, right? That was the most current of age thing because the people, like you said, that didn't never leave and never went on vacation and never did anything, you know, that sat on the front porch and stayed on the corner that whole time had a purpose, right? So if we start speaking the purpose of living in life and whatever you get bombarded with, it's not that serious to jump out the window. That's a phrase that me and Keith came up with. We'll jump out the window on the little stuff, right? But Quick. like you say, you know, all you had to do, <laughs> <laughs> right. You know right. what I'm saying? But all you had to do is tap that person on the shoulder. It's like, well, damn, you talked to me at the right time because you know what I was about to go do? Burn right. up everything. Right. <laughs> you set right. the whole right. front yard right. on fire. Right. 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 How many times you had hit your plan? You had made up your mind. You was going to go sit in the corner. You was going to go bury your sorrows. You was about to go drink a pint of crown. You was about to, you, you was really about to just go in the corner and just, and just like, like, just go through it. And then somebody caught at the right fucking yeah. time and be like, hey, what you doing? You be like, <laughs> look, yeah. you know I'll what tell I'm you. Saying? Like, we still <laughs> yeah. gonna drink. Now, we still gonna, we still gonna drink these bottles away, but I don't feel like I'm go by myself now. <laughs> nah, I'm a, I'm a, I, I, look, I'll tell you, I've I been, I was in a scenario like that a couple of years ago, and it was all the way, I was all the way out of line, but I still feel like I was justified, because it is, so it's my kids, and Nick, you know about this, right? It was my kids, <laughs> right? They, they was so at the my, lake house, so, at the lake house. No, no, not, 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 yeah, 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 at the lake house, at the yeah, lake house. At the lake house. So to make, to make a long story short, right? Uh, my older daughter, my grown daughter, right, is playing big sister to my 16-year-old son who want to do what the fuck he want to do and, and not listen to me. So it was a whole runaway kidnapping scheme that basically jumped off. And in the midst of that, because, you know, I'm me. I know what the fuck is going on. I'm calling, and nobody want to answer the phone. So I say, okay. Let me take this gas can, <laughs> go around the corner, and fill this motherfucker up, <laughs> and then I called my daughter and I said, "Look, you don't want to answer the phone. I leave a message. You want to answer the phone? That's cool. I can't do nothing to you, and I can't do nothing to nobody in that house. But I'm gonna burn down everything in your motherfucking front yard. You believe that shit? You don't want to fucking answer this phone? You won't be driving none of them motherfucking cars up around this bitch. <laughs> I bet that <laughs> right now." Was I out of line? Fuck yeah. But was I justified? Fuck yeah. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> god damn it. But look, this is the thing that stopped me, man. My old girlfriend, man, it, you know, it, it was just, I don't know, from out of the nowhere. She hit me up. I don't know if she knew what was going on. I don't know. And she was like, what you doing? I was like, fixing to go burn some shit up. <laughs> she was like, okay, nigga, you know you're going to jail, right? <laughs> So you right. need to just kick back. And it just stopped me in my tracks and shit, right? Because I was about to do some shit that they would still be talking about today, man. I wouldn't be able to explain or justify that shit. No way in the fucking world. Some stranger, yeah. My kids, come on, man. But I'm that yeah. nigga, right? Yeah. <laughs> I will fuck but, you up. I don't give a fuck. You my kids, man. I expect for you to have a, a whole different kind of respect for me, man. As opposed to some nigga on the street. Yeah. But my point is that, you know... um, in that scenario, first of all, the scenario should have ne never even been taking place because mentally I should have been stable enough to be able to go around that as opposed to getting caught in my pride, right? Because that's what it was. It was pride. It was, okay, you know, this is, I set this shit up to be what this is supposed to be and you interfered in this like some fuck me, no fuck you, right? And yeah. just having somebody, like you said, to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, what the fuck is you doing? you know, brings you kind of back into focus. But what we yeah. need, I think as a community, not individually, because I still think I'm Superman and I ain't, I don't need nobody to talk to but y'all, right? This is why we do this show, right? For me, this is my third. Yeah. But I think that as a community, we should be a little more, not only should we be more open to being able to talk through shit, but we ought to have those facilities 
accept, accept, accessible and available to us at the same time. And that is another part of the problem that mental health, um, mental health care is not readily accessible to our of community. Course. It's not not even on the drug. Not even if you take drug. If you take drug use as a mental health issue, as opposed to a criminal issue, then the mental health aspect of drug addiction is never addressed, you know, in an appropriate manner. Again, you have that stigma, you know, that oh, you've been to rehab. <laughs> I wonder did it work this time? You know that kind of shit. Who the fuck wants to it's tell right. somebody, <laughs> you know, that I need help? <laughs> Look, look, cause what when I asked you what you when I was going to this counselor, right? And it said that they was like, Well, you're gonna do something to yourself. I was like, Well, you know, I got right spiritually first. I got right with the universe first, right? Because all the things that I had actually when I was laying in that hospital, it didn't exist. <laughs> no phone, no motorcycles, no hundred thousand dollar cars, no houses in the desert, on a lake, uh seaside, wherever you wanna say, right? You know, I couldn't travel. And the thing is, right, did that put me to think? No, it's like, I heard that voice that said, the promise you made to me when I birthed you is not done yet. Go back to this place. Now I have came back like, nigga, where you been? In the hospital for like 30 days. <laughs> what, what, nobody called me? You know what I'm saying? My mama's like, don't want to answer the phone. Like, look, 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 Shell, this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> he's so he's so he's so technologically uh uh behind everybody and shit because he's up in them damn woods right so this nigga okay so it's it's fine right you know sometimes i don't want to talk to nobody but i answer my phone all the time but i'm just saying sometimes i don't want to talk to people right and it's cool <laughs> if you just don't answer your shit right this nigga because i talked to him on messenger right I can see when he sees that I called, right? When he when he looked at right. the missed call, I can see the shit. Then I talked to this nigga two days later, and he'd be like, "Oh, you called? Oh man, uh, you know the Wi-Fi out here, nigga. If you don't get the fuck out of here." <laughs> But at the same time, no, because we'll, of where we'll we come from, you know, because of of how we are as men. Right, and because of the shit that I know about this nigga and what he knows about me, it's very easy for either one of us to start to worry about, you know, shit that the rest What's of the world on? would hear about and be like, "What the fuck happened?" Like, he what? Right. You know what I'm saying? This nigga drove off a cliff or some shit, or, you know, no more, man. or you know, this nigga shot up the whole goddamn no, community. No you know, Nick Nick then went in the little uh, went in the saloon and shit and uh, shot up everybody on the fucking side of the mountain or some crazy shit like that, right? I'm always right. worried about that because no yeah, but shit, you gotta answer your phone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> shit, fuck that. But that's it. But but that's how it's supposed to be. I think if like if you go if you you know you go into a slumber or something like that, then yes, there should be somebody who be like, I ain't talk to this, I ain't talk to her in days, or I ain't talk to her, I ain't talk to her in twenty four hours. That's not like her, you know. Or if I do call and she don't answer the phone, usually within maybe an hour she'll call me back or right. something, you know. Right. Just just that you know like that. Hey, like did you okay? You know. Blink two times if you do, you know, or something like that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't show up to the house. Hostage, you know, or something like that, you know. I'm a pull up person. I will, I will pull up to the house. I go right to the house and knock on the door. You know, but. I will pull up. Yeah, I will pull up. I'll so, be like, so, you know. So the, th so the thing is, y'all, right? So to right. get a, a, a back to the, the clarification of this, right? My opinion is. Right, of, of, of my my ver my vision of it is if everybody gets right with their spiritual self, if everybody get right with the universe and find out what's in their nature, then we could actually talk to to other people and share this thing, and not say that it has to be forced by transparency or what I tell you going to use it in the future to hurt me, because that's the other underlying thing, right? So to get over that mental struggle, is the part. You know what I'm saying? Because people align themselves to try to bring you down too. If they know that you got a, a, a dysfunction, as we could say, right? That we tick a little different, right? Because your strength is in the power of how you feel spiritually inside yourself. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's meant to be what it's meant to be. No more, no less, right? So we could go shot it up and spend all this kind of money, but nobody's with me all of the time. I can't pick up that phone and be a solid person that walks along the side of me. So you get a group of people with mindset, you know, kind of in your realm. And that's how we've been rolling. And next thing you know, years didn't pass. We don't even think about that part because we are actually enjoying life. So do you that's think... That's well, how to do it, enjoy life. I think Good. you do have to, you know, get yourself together seriously. But I think you have to, hey, I think I think you have to come to a good place for actually saying that, hey, I got some, you know, I'm 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 more I'm more sad than I'm happy, right. and maybe what I'm doing, you know, it ain't it ain't really working for me. So maybe I need to come to some type of medium, and what I'm gonna do and stuff like that. So. uh you know, I, I think that, you know, first, first you have to be willing to accept that something may be going on. You right, know, something right, may right. be right. You know, like, you know, if you're a person that cry every day and you just say, okay, but I cry every day. Okay, but, you know. Is that is normal? It, <laughs> is, it, is it really normal? It may be your norm, but is it really normal? Right. You know, if you feel like you get to the point where you, you know, you, you can't hold on a relationship or, you know, friends, you know, you, you know, you have them, but you don't want to talk to them, you know, so, you know, I think at some point within yourself, you have to be like, look, I acknowledge I got some stuff going on with me and stuff like that, and, you know, you hope, and, you know, and don't get me wrong, during your transition, you know, you, you, you hope that people who claim they down for you, you hope, you, you, you hope they be there for you, but it's a possibility they won't, because you already know that people, you know, pe- 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 people are fearful and people with people. So I'm just saying, you know, everybody's not going to be 10 toes, 10 toes down for you all the time. You know, sometimes you have to pick your own stuff so, up. Right. Yeah. So let, let me tell you this, Shell, right? You are a success story. Yeah. Okay. You are a success story. Most definitely. You know, I'm saying in, in, in real life, right? In real like today, uh-huh. Shell is a success story because you accomplished things that you didn't think you was accomplishing yesterday. No, true. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You would be right. all kind. Of, you know what I'm saying? So if if you put that in the mix, right? And I'm not uh-huh. just saying out of that, you know what I'm saying? On no cap, on, on, on capping and shit, right? But you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? But that is your truth, right? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So if you live with that every day, that you 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 successful at living too. Now it might not have been the way that other people thought it would go, but it was it's your life, right? That's right. I, you know I what I'm saying? So the thing is that. that you a cop, you know, and so that is the thing that we got to start with is, is saying, hey, I see you. I see your success. I don't see all that other stuff until you tell me. Right. Right? Yeah, I get but that. I right. know that relinquish my, my power to the women in my life and say that you're success for all the rest of it because they had you. You are part of my journey in this life. You know what I'm saying? Right. Matt, Frank. You know what I'm saying? If you actually start doing that, then you have a sense of not hope, but prospering. Right. Right? If, if we if we start if we get rid of the uh you know what I'm saying, the hating grammar, or you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that, and actually say, you know what? That is the part that we all see that we are striving for to have a civil conversation with somebody. And to say, Okay, I see you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here for your flesh. I'm not here for to take what you got in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to build with you because we built inner strength. So that's, you know, and, and look, people, they think I'm, I, they, you know, crazy is like submissive, right? But they think that I'm a nut when I talk like this, but I got people around me, my whole Hemini crew, you know what I'm saying? They know who they are. You know what I'm saying? My peeps that's out here, but we can walk in everybody's life. We got the open door. I got keys to people's houses. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to call. I just walk on in. I might clean up the bathroom or whatever, whatever. It could be something. You know, I don't drink coffee no more like that. You know what I'm saying? But I'll be up in there and they're like, wow, everything clean. You got Sasha and good, healthy stuff. And that is the part. Okay. <laughs> and that gets us to the end of the hour. <laughs> of course, <laughs> Nick Nass, my guy. All right. So before we end, I got two things to say, right? Number one, um, 
what I want to, you know, what I was thinking about, and I'm really just discussing this with you guys on the air right now, although I'm talking to all the people that may be watching, is, you know, it's nothing for us to bring a guest in and put you in one of these little squares, and you can come in and talk that shit, man, talk your real, you know, sp you know spill what you really feel. Um, everybody that um, knows any of the four of us, you know, you're welcome. Get with, you know, one of us and, you know, we'll schedule to bring you on. It's not no big thing and it don't take no whole bunch of nothing. The second thing is, Shell, you're going to really fucking die when you see this video, girl. Because <laughs> your chroma key the whole time, right? It's making you go in and out like you don't got no hair. I know. I know. I know. No, no. I can't. <laughs> but, but let's, let's be clear. Let's be clear. My cousin is beautiful. And all you all y'all with no edges. All y'all with no edges. Yeah. <laughs> don't fucking play. She got that Indian hair. But it's all good. This is, this is what I always say. I always say that, you know, um, uh, uh, good audio and bad video beats uh, good video and bad audio all the time. I want to hear what you got to say, whether yeah. and I want to see what you look like. So it's all good. Thanks again, you guys. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. And uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining in, everybody on uh, Facebook and YouTube. All right, what? Peace. All right.